Good morning, beautiful. Today, we're going to take a first look at the Tamron 70-200 G2. Larry here with Southern Exposure, information and inspiration for the amateur photographer. And I'm kind of excited because I've just received my copy of the Tamron 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 G2. Um, if you're curious, the full name of this lens is the SP 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 DI VC USD G2. Um, now, a lot of that is, you know, just throwaway stuff. The important part about it is, uh, first of all, VC, uh, which is vibration control. And the other part that's important to take note of is the G2, because I understand um, from what I've seen online that the generation two of this lens is much improved over the first generation. Um, as far as autofocus, uh, clarity, sharpness, um, aberration i mean the g2 is supposed to be better than the first version in just about every way i don't have the version one to compare it to um, so i can't really speak to that but that's what everybody else seems to be saying so um, i'll go with it the other thing that i'd like to add is that this lens was not sent to me for free uh, this is not sponsored or endorsed in any way this is my own personal opinions um, I bought this lens on my own and I am within the 30 day return policy with Amazon. So I've really got no stake in giving this a glowing review if it doesn't actually live up to the expectations. So let's talk a little bit about the lens. Um, you can see I've got it attached to the FTZ adapter for Nikon because I'm going to be using this on my Z6. With the FTZ adapter on it, it makes the overall length of the lens and the adapter just a hair over nine inches. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if uh, you're gonna be shooting in tight quarters. Um, it's not really huge, uh, but it is a little bigger than say the 24 to 70 F4 that comes with uh, the Z6 and Z7 in the kit. Another thing that um, I really like about the lens, which wasn't mentioned in many of the other reviews, is that when you zoom, um, all of the movement is internal in the lens. Uh, the lens does not extend when you zoom out to 200. It stays the same length. Um, so that's kind of a nice feature. As far as the build quality, um, just looking over this thing and holding it in my hands, it feels very solid. It has a really nice fit and finish to it. Everything feels nice and smooth and solid. The switches operate nicely. There's a nice satisfying click to the switches. Um, and even the, the vibration control mode switch, which actually squeezes three positions into what normally would be a two position switch, operates very confidently. You know which position you're in when you move um, the switch. The zoom and focus rings operate very smooth. There's not really any catches. When I move for, on this copy, when I move from 200 down to 70, it gets just a hair tighter down towards the 70 millimeter end, but it's barely noticeable. And the rest of the movement is very smooth. The focus ring is smooth as well. And you can also see there is a window on the lens that shows your focusing distance. Um, a lot of lenses don't include that anymore, but I actually like to have that on there, especially when I'm trying to focus at infinity. It makes it a little easier to um, uh, figure out where you need to, to get your focus ring if you're focusing manually. One other thing I did want to mention, the um, tripod collar. The tripod collar has a built-in Arca Swiss style plate on the bottom of it, which I think is very helpful. The tripod collar itself is the only piece that I feel like is just a little bit, I don't know, maybe chintzy feeling. Um, for lack of a better term, it is a little bit clicky as you rotate it around the lens. 
Um, not really a big deal, but it just seems a little bit below the standard of the rest of the lens. The tripod collar is removable. Um, you can take it all the way off the lens. However, in the limited uh, shooting that I've done so far with this lens, it doesn't really seem to get in the way. So I've just left it on there uh, up to this point. In the future, it may become an issue, but so far I've not had any problems with it. You can easily reach uh, both the zoom ring and the focus ring without uh, running into the tripod collar. So I've just left it on there. Hasn't been an issue at all. This lens retails for around $1,200 US, um, which is a decent chunk of change for an amateur or especially for a beginner. But considering what you get for that money, um, I definitely think it's well worth it, uh, especially when you compare it to the first party uh, lenses. The first party Nikon uh, 70 to 200 is about twice as much um, as this lens and the quality is on par, absolutely. Uh, the lens comes with a uh, lens hood and a cloth bag um, to put the lens in. Now, when I bought the lens, I ordered it from Amazon and I actually bought it from a seller on Amazon that I've used before. Some of you may have heard of it as well. It's called Digital Goja. Um, they put together these packages, I'm sure you've seen them before, where they'll package a, a lens with several little accessories with it. So that's actually what I bought. I paid the same price for this package as I would have paid for just the lens. Keeping in mind now, when you buy just the lens, you get the lens, lens caps, lens hood, and cloth bag, and that's it. The package that I got with Digital Goja um, included some other goodies. It included a 64 gigabyte SD card, um, which uh, I'm not really gonna be using with my Z6, obviously, but I do have other cameras and other devices that I can use that with. Um, it includes a, you know, a cheap little cleaning kit. It's got the little air puffer, uh, some brushes and tissues and stuff on there. So um, it's always nice to have extra cleaning equipment. It also comes with a package of filters. I haven't even opened this up yet. I believe there's like an ND filter and a uh, circular polarizer in here. I am gonna try these out, but I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope for them. Uh, I imagine the quality on those is gonna be pretty low. But here's the thing that really uh, convinced me to go with the package from Digital Goja rather than just the uh, lens itself from Amazon. And that is that the package from Digital Goja also included the Tamron tap-in console. Now, this doesn't come with the lens if you buy the lens only. Um, but the package from Digital Goja did include the tap-in console. And what's really nice about that is the tap-in console is required to update firmware for the lens. Um, obviously, I'm shooting a Nikon Z6. If you have one of the Nikon Z series cameras and you want to adapt this lens to your body, the lens has to have the most current firmware in it in order for it to work with the camera uh, for the autofocus and the exposure functions and all that to operate properly. So if you're shooting a Nikon Z series, the tap-in console is a must-have, and if you buy this on its own, it's 60 bucks. Now, $60 isn't a huge amount of money, but you know, if I can save $60 by buying it in a package, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, so that's nice that that package includes that. The rest of the stuff, I really could care less about. Um, you know, don't really need the other things, but they're kind of nice to have, but that tap-in console is definitely a nice add-in um, with this package. Speaking of the tap-in console, uh, let's go ahead and do a firmware update on this lens and see how it goes. Now keep in mind, I have just taken this lens out of the box. I have never done a firmware update on any lens before. I've done firmware updates on my camera, uh, but I've never done a firmware update on a lens. I've never done a Tamron uh, firmware update. So you're gonna get to see exactly how this process goes for someone who has never done it before, um, because a lot of you might be in that same position if you get this lens. Um, so we'll see how, uh, how easy or difficult it is for someone who's never done a Tamron update uh, firmware before. Um, let's get started on that and see how it goes. Okay, so like I said, I've never done this before. The documentation that comes with the tap-in console refers you to a website to download an install utility. So I'm gonna go on the website and do that now.
Okay, this is um, pretty basic. It says, after accepting the user agreement, please download the installation file, and it gives you links. Okay, and there's two different links here for Windows. Uh, there's a 64-bit and a 32-bit. I'm using Windows 10, which is 64-bit, so I'm going to click Agree and Download and it just downloaded an executable file. I'm gonna go ahead and drag that onto my desktop. And we'll double click that to run the uh, install utility. Alright, I just went ahead and clicked install using all of the default settings that they suggest. I have a desktop icon now that says Tamron Tap-In Utility. I'm going to go ahead and open that up. Okay, it looks like you have to connect the tap-in console before you open the utility. So let's go ahead and do that. The tap-in console comes with a cord to connect it to your computer. Looks like we've got standard USB on one end to connect to your computer and a micro USB to connect to the tap-in console. Plug into console and then connect this to the computer and now I'm going to open the utility again. Okay, verify update tap in console firmware is not up to date run update so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Click OK. Looks like this is updating firmware for the tap in console itself. Uh, you, as you can see I'm not connected to the lens. Okay, it says firmware update complete. And now I've got a window that says, please attach the lens. So I'm gonna remove the back cover from the lens. There's also a cover on the tap-in console. But as you can see, it's a pretty simple connection. I've got a blue light here now on the tap-in console. And on my screen, I see the lens. You can use this software, um, the tap-in console, to customize the lens, but right now all I'm going to do is make sure that the firmware is up to, up to date, update it if it's not, and then try the lens out on the Z6. I have a window here that says lens firmware is not up to date, run update, and I'm going to click OK. Gives me a warning not to turn off the computer or disconnect anything. Click OK again, and it shows downloading firmware, updating firmware. While the update is in progress, the blue light on the tap-in console is blinking. Before it was just on solid. All right, I've hit 100%, and it says firmware update complete. Now, that actually took a little longer than I thought it would. Uh, the progress bar kind of raced up to 50% and then slowly incremented uh, from there on to 100%. In total, uh, the whole process took about 10 minutes, 9 or 10 minutes. Not too bad, uh, but like I said, it was just a little longer than I expected it to be. But everything seems to have gone smoothly. The blue light on the tap-in console is back to solid. It's no longer blinking. Everything appears to be um, working the way it's supposed to, so I'm going to disconnect this thing from the computer, get it on the camera, and see how it works. Okay guys, for the sake of time, I've decided to split this into two videos. I'm going to keep this as an unboxing and firmware update, and I'll be back later with an actual review of the lens with its performance, and we'll see uh, some results from it. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. And in the meantime, go out, take pictures, and have fun doing it. Thanks.